look over the horizon for a second and say we get that part right as as a as a community, as a, as a, as an ecosystem, as marketers and as publishers and as as agencies. Let's talk about the measurement. You know, we're still struggling with with uh, antiquated measurements uh, in in every medium today. But let's just talk about one. How do you value a fan? I mean, you know, is that the new CPM? And how do we translate that? And, and, and how are you looking at that, Carolyn, from, a, from an outbound standpoint? And you've looked at it from both sides. You, yep. you're, in your career, you've, you know, you're a marketer, and you've been on the buy side, the sell side, and, and the buy and sell side at the same time. So how do you look at it in terms of the value of a fan? You know, we don't think about the value of a fan, um, and we encourage brands not to just measure their their campaign, if you will, or their, we don't even want to call it a campaign, their presence on Facebook just on value of fan, because we have brands that have 10, 15, 20 million fans, and yet I would argue they're still not getting the, the, the maximum benefit out of Facebook because they haven't thought through the platform integration. We have other brands that have 1 million platform fans. Platform integration on, on Facebook? On or? their site, okay. on, on the, and, and their entire business, right? So have they thought about, all of our platform benefits, the likes, the social plugins, et cetera. And, and when they do that, the benefit that they get from the advertising is that much higher. I would say this about measurement. We clearly don't have the tools in place today to properly measure this, and we're acutely aware of that. The efforts that we're doing, we're partnering with Nielsen to actually come out with an online GRP standard so that brands can actually think about what their TV GRP buy is, if you will, in the, in the old days, and how, do you, how does that compare to just a reach block, if you will, on Facebook or any, frankly, any online environment. It could be Twitter or anyone else. So we, we're working that direction. We're also starting to understand that it's really about the value of what we call stories and conversations, and that's the measurement. So if you have a million fans, but those million fans are not saying very much about your brand. They're not really interacting with your page posts because maybe your page posts are not as exciting. They're not updated frequently enough. If, if you just have a million fans and you stop there at the measurement, you're missing the whole point. Really, it's about what are those million fans doing for you? What are they talking about? How many stories are they generating? Because every time they generate something, it feeds the ecosystem. So if I'm a fan of Volkswagen and I go for a test drive and I have an awesome experience and I talk about that in my Facebook environment, that goes to my friends, right? And once it goes to my friends and if they have a similar experience, it goes friends of friends and it's almost like concentric circles. That's what we should be measuring, not have you ticked the box and gotten X number of fans. I think it's funny to hear you say that. For one way, um, I think partly because one of the things I like about Facebook is if you want to look at it from a pure measurement of old-fashioned metrics, well, how many people did this and then this and then this, Facebook is brilliant at being able to say, 25 people clicked on your ad, and out of those 25 people, another 15 of their friends clicked on your ad. Which if you're looking at, at that from a dollar or cents perspective, and you start thinking about effective CPMs and effective cost per actions, not that I think this should be measured that way, but if you need to give that to your CEO, Facebook thus far is the only brand I've looked at that I can say, oh, they can actually do that. And I've tried to replicate that in other ways, but because Facebook can tell me how many additional impressions are generated, one of my fans says, oh, I like this ad from Volkswagen, or I like this car from Volkswagen. It's a really invaluable piece of business to be able to do that. And I think the other part of that is, that's kind of funny about the value of a fan. How much is a fan worth when they're not talking? But how much is a fan really worth when somebody gets on your page and criticizes your brand, but 10 of your fans get up there and say, no, you're wrong. This is a really good brand. I've seen that happen currently at Volkswagen. We've seen that happen. I've seen that happen at some of my previous organizations. And to me, that's almost invaluable. Knowing when to sit back and say, not going to touch this, because I know I've got 750,000 fans out there who are going to do it for me. Al Italia, an airline in Italy, had a, some tough customer service issues and were very reluctant about actually going onto the Facebook platform and putting customer service. And what they found is that actually people started to provide customer service to fellow to fellow people that were commenting on the site and sort of the community took over and gave suggestions and started to improve the experience. So there is there are those people that are just super passionate about brands and you know what we're trying to do is we think of building the the identity of the web. So our difference, you know, and Twitter I think is very effective for the things that you described, but there is a very significant difference between what Facebook is doing and Twitter. What we're trying to do is map people's true identity and 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 map it with 
their profile information, their places they're interested in, the brands they're interested in, so that when Sarah wants to communicate, she actually knows who she's communicating with. These are people that have identified themselves, have given, have shared information about what their likes are, and that's a very personalized environment, which is different a bit than Twitter, where people have more screen names and things that we had, you know, even when AOL started.